Building a serverless solution on top of Kubernetes is a lot of fun. That's what we've done with Kubeless. So go to GitHub, it's open source, you can get it, it's terrific. It runs on top of Kubernetes so we can leverage all the Kubernetes primitives. But once you've done that, you actually need to start using it and build apps, okay? Apps, apps, apps. To do this, we have been using the serverless framework, which is the de facto standard these days to deploy serverless application on AWS Lambda, Google Cloud Function, Azure Function, you name it. It's all Node.js. We love Node.js at Bitnami. So we wrote a plugin for Kubeless, which is called the serverless Kubeless, and it's developed upstream in the serverless repo. You can see here the web page, serverless and serverless Kubeless. In that repo, in that plugin, there is a directory called example. In that example, there is a really nice app, which is the to-do app. That's what we're going to do today. Okay, We're going to run a to-do application in a serverless manner using Kubeless. So here in my terminal, I have cloned the repo. And I'm going to go to the front end. Here you have the front end. It's a React Redux application. And I'm going to run it with just a simple npm start. Of course, first time you clone the repo, you're going to have to do an npm install. And then you'll be able to do the npm start. OK, here you go. It's running. So let's go to our browser, open localhost 8080. And something's going to happen, giving us an error. An error occurred, failed to fetch. And yes, of course, because there is no backend, there are no routes. The app is just a front end. It doesn't know how it doesn't know how to do anything. So we need to build the backend. So let's go to the other tab here. We're on this on that same directory in the same repo, but we're in the backend uh, you know uh, directory. In that backend directory, we have a serverless manifest which describes all the APIs that we're going to use for that to-do. So we have a create function, a read all, a read one, an update, a delete. Each of those functions are defined here in the function section of a service. Here you see service to-do. This is a serverless manifest. And the provider here is kubeless instead of being AWS Lambda. So underneath, we have our Kubernetes services. You see that, of course, I need to start state somewhere. So what I did on Kubernetes, I launched a MongoDB instance so I can use that as a, as a database. OK, perfect. So I have my MongoDB. I have my serverless manifest. What I'm going to do now is just do a serverless deploy. And what the plugin will do, it will go through the manifest. It's going to look at all the functions and it's going to say, oh, OK, let me launch that function. OK. Underneath what's happening, let's uh, let's open another tab and let's just look at uh, kubectl get pods. So what happens here? We see that now our pods, we have the MongoDB pod that's running state and we have those pods for create, delete, we see that there are init containers, read all, read one, update, init containers. And those pods are, of course, being created by deployments. So we see the deployments for each API you know, route. And if we look at the service, we have a service for each API route. And because we wanted to expose those functions to the outside, we also ended up with ingress rules for all of those. Okay, so the kubeless controller created all of this uh, when we did serverless deploy. So let's go back and see what's happening. It's still launching. Why is it still launching? Is because the pods are still in the uh, init stage so they need to download the dependencies that's why we're using init container once they've downloaded the dependencies the, the pods will start and the routes will be ready usually it takes a short time and when we look at the pods at one point yeah here you go we see that you know it was fairly quick now all the pods are running we see that we have ingress exposing those routes so we go back to our to-do front end, localhost 8080. The routes are exposed 
via ingress thanks to the ingress controller that's running on my Kubernetes cluster. And now I can add to-dos and do another one and yet another one. And I have a very nice to-do. Isn't that great? Perfect.